happy morning children so today we are going to see the last part of early humans lesson from history we have seen about paleolithic period which is called as the old stone age in this stage humans were nomads and food gatherers generally they hunted wild animals and fish they gathered fruits etc the hunters and gatherers usually moved from place to place a few reasons why they moved from place to places are after staying at a place and eating up all the animals and plants there they would go elsewhere in search of food animals move from place to place in search of food and shelter that's why those who hunted them had to follow their movements in search of seasonal fruits since it didn't grow anywhere everywhere they had to move from place to place changing locations according to the season people animals and plants need water to survive water is found in lakes streams and rivers while many rivers are perennial that means have water throughout the year so while many rivers are perennial others are seasonal and only have water mainly during the rainy season people live on the banks of perennial rivers had to move in search of another source of water when they dried up in summers and winters let's now see a recap of what we have seen last week we have seen about tool making techniques stone on stone and pressure flaking discovery of fire art by early humans major paleolithic sites it's about the techniques stone on stone in this technique one hand firmly held the pebble or core from which the tool was to be crafted the other hand held another stone which was used as a hammer the second stone or the hammer stone was struck on the core in a manner to break away parts of the stone and give the desired shape to the core stone and make it into a tool you can see the picture how stone on stone technique is used by early humans This is the next technique that's called pressure flaking. It's a method of trimming the edge of a stone tool by removing all stony flakes by pressing on the stone with a sharp stone rather than striking it. So children, you can see until recently many people including barbers used to sharpen the steel blades of knives and shaving blades by rubbing them against a stone. so by pressure play flaking method only it's being done discovery of fire there is an assumption that fire must have been discovered by accident when two stones are rubbed together creating a spark which would have burned some dry leaves and this must have led to the discovery of fire by early humans it was one of the most important discovery in the history of humans slowly early humans learn how to use fire and how to control it so they used fire to cook meat to light outside the caves for protection from wild animals to keep them warm in the cold weather art by early humans so early humans painted on the walls of caves such paintings have been found inside the caves in bimbetka in madhya pradesh have been declared as a world heritage site by unesco these paintings tell us something about early humans lifestyle they depict scenes how they lived and some scenes are hunting people dancing playing round drums wounded animals people riding animals like elephant bison etc in one of the paintings man has been shown riding on a horse the colors used are mainly white and red and at certain places we can see green and yellow color scientists they have the view that these colors were prepared by combining charcoal red stone and powders from other stones the paintings have survived for so many years and still colors are not faded let's see about main paleolithic sites We learned that a site is a place where some stone tools belonging to early humans are found. Most Paleolithic sites were located near the areas 
where good quality of stones were available and which were close to sources of water like lakes rivers etc a number of paleolithic sites have been found in hanski and karnool river beds of sound river in punjab kashmir narmada valley etc since early humans lived in these areas they are also called the habitation sites so children today we are going to learn about mesolithic period features of mesolithic period neolithic period a case study of deccan mesolithic period it's also known as the middle stone age this period lasted from 10000 to 8000 bce in greek the word meso means middle thus it's called as the middle stone age so we have seen in paleolithic age that paleolithic is a greek word paleo means old and lithos means stone so it was called as old stone age in the same way mesolithic the word meso in greek the word meso means middle and we know that lithos means stone so it's called as middle stone age this period lasts from 10000 to 8000 bce this was the period between paleolithic and the neolithic period the climate changed and it became warm and dry in this period the climatic changes brought about changes in the environment and made it possible for human beings to move to new areas this age intervened as a transitional phase between the paleolithic age and the neolithic age so here the mesolithic period or middle stone age is an archaeological term describing specific cultures that fall between the paleolithic and the neolithic periods while the start and end dates of the mesolithic period vary by geographical region it dated approximately from 10000 bce to 8000 bce the paleolithic was an age of purely hunting and gathering but toward the mesolithic period the development of agriculture contributed to the rise of permanent settlements the later neolithic period is distinguished by the domestication of plants and animals some mesolithic people continued with intensive hunting while others practiced the initial stages of domestication some mesolithic settlements were villages of huts others walled cities features of the mesolithic period during this age humans learned to make better tools these tools were more delicate as compared to the tools of the paleolithic age they made flake tools such as scrapers and knives they started to make smaller and sharper tools called microliths so we have learned that from paleolithic period people started making tools by using stone so in mesolithic period humans learned to make better tools comparing paleolithic period and these tools were more fine comparing the tools that were made by early humans in the period of paleolithic in that age which means in the paleolithic age they maximum used stone like flint stone since it was easily breakable and it was easily shaped but here they made flake tools such as scrapers and knives they started making smaller and sharper tool called microliths and the type of tools used is a distinguished factor among these cultures mesolithic tools were generally composite devices manufactured with small chip stone tools called microliths and retouched bladelets Let's see what's a microlith. A microlith is a small stone tool, usually made of flint or chert, and typically a centimeter or so in length and half a centimeter wide. They were used by early humans during the Mesolithic period. The microliths were used in spear points and arrowheads. See the picture picture here, children. You can get to know what is a microlith. and how shapes are used in this 
Microlids are tiny rays of flakes that were fitted into the wooden shaft of an arrow or spear. There is an archaeological evidence to show that flint blades were used to provide tips of arrows. These blades were fitted into handles of wood or bone and formed the cutting parts of various types of tools. So, the Paleolithic utilized more primitive stone treatments and the Neolithic mainly used polished rather than chipped stone tools because the tools which is made in Mesolithic period were maximum used with flint blades since it was easily shapeable and these flint blades were used to provide tips of arrows. These blades they fitted into handles of wood or bone and formed the cutting parts of various types of tools. Humans continued to be food gatherers in the early part of this age but towards the later humans began to grow crops and started to tame animals. So we have seen that in the Paleolithic age people didn't know how to grow crops. So, they were nomads and food gatherers. They moved from place to place in groups. They hunted and gathered food. They hunted animals and they ate raw meat and they ate fruits that grew naturally. In the Mesolithic period, the same way, humans continued to be food gatherers in the early part. Then, when days crossed, in the end of the part, they began to grow crops and learn to tame animals. Neolithic period Neolithic period or New Stone Age period lasted from 8000 to 4000 BCE. The word Neo means new in Greek and this is the last period of the Stone Age. So children, the first period of Stone Age is Paleolithic and the second period is Mesolithic and now we are learning about the third period that is the final period, Neolithic period. This lasted from 8000 to 4000 BCE. The word Neo means new and we know Lithos means stone. So it's called as New, new Stone Age period. So Neolithic period is also called as New Stone Age period. This period is the cultural revolution or technological development among prehistoric humans. It was characterized by Stone tools shaped by polishing or grinding dependence on domesticated plants or animals, settlement in permanent villages and the appearance of such crafts as pottery and weaving. The Neolithic followed by the Paleolithic and the Mesolithic periods. The Neolithic revolution also called the agricultural revolution marked the transition in human history from small nomadic bands of hunter-gatherers to a larger agricultural settlements and early civilization. So you can see the pictures for the agricultural revolution and domesticate, domestication of animals, how they were progressed. The Neolithic revolution started around 10,000 BC in the Fertile Crescent, a boomerang-shaped region of the Middle East where humans first took up farming. Shortly after Stone Age humans in other parts of the world also began to practice agriculture. Civilizations and cities grew out of the innovations of the Neolithic Revolution. Result of Neolithic Revolution Permanent settlements were established. Neolithic villages continued to divide work between men and women. Women's status declined as men took the lead in most areas of these early societies. So, comparing Paleolithic and the Mesolithic, Neolithic revolution has made so many changes in the life of early human. They had permanent settlements. The Neolithic villages continued to divide work between men and women. And the women's status declined as men took the most leading areas in these early societies. Let's do a case study of Deccan. Deccan is a plateau. Plateau means a large high area of flat land. So Deccan is one of the oldest plateaus of the Indian subcontinent. 
it has many rivers flowing from the western edges towards the bay of bengal the region has a warm climate and rocky surfaces it has huge stretches of forests and all these factors could have helped the people of the stone age to find food water and shelter in comfortable temperature so deccan is the largest plateau in the south india between the western ghats and the eastern ghats and defined as the peninsula region between these ranges that south of the narmada river many sites of human settlements of the stone age have been found spread over different parts of the deccan plateau most of these are alongside the various rivers and their tributaries one such site where archaeologists have found many signs of the stone age habitation is hansgi this site is close to the krishna river hansgi is located in the north karnataka some localities at hansgi isampo and ediapo were excavated systematically so we have seen that human settlements of stone age which means paleolithic mesolithic and neolithic ages have been found spread over in different parts of the deccan plateau most of these are alongside the various rivers and lake side and their tributaries one such site where archaeologists have found many signs of the stone age habitation is hanski we have seen that in our lesson itself this site is close to the krishna river hanski is located in the north karnataka and some localities at hanski are isampur and ediapur were excavated systematic systematically the artifacts recovered from these localities include hand axes cleavers scrapers and knives which are characteristic of the paleolithic and mesolithic age the limestone formed the principal type of stone for tool making although other raw materials such as granite basalt and shale were also used some localities around this site have also yielded small amounts of fossils of wild cattle has elephant and deer so we can see here that artifacts recovered from these localities so archaeologists recovered some artifacts from these localities so uh, such artifacts like hand axes cleavers scrapers and knives whatever the tools were made by early humans so all these are the characteristic of paleolithic and mesolithic age the limestone formed the principal type of stone for tool making although other raw materials such as granite not only all those tool materials other materials like granite basalt and shale were also used by early humans some localities around these sites have also yielded small amounts of fossils of wild cattle has elephant and deer this is drier than the coastal region of india the deccan produced some of the major dynasties in indian history including pallavas satavahana vahataka chalukya and rashtrabhuta dynasties okay children we have completed our lesson early humans from history complete the given homework and activity on time and send it in the whatsapp group we'll meet you all with a new chapter in the next session children thank you all